Okay, in the previous screencast, we talked about how lightning is generated. And in this screencast, we're going to discuss thunder. So, because y'all have experienced um, thunderstorms, I'm sure, in your lifetime, and you know that lightning and thunder are closely linked. Okay? Um, first of all, what exactly is thunder? Well, thunder, it says, is an acoustic shock wave resulting from the extreme heat generated by a lightning flash. Okay, and you may sort of hear blah, 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 blah when I read that. First of all, acoustic shock wave. Acoustic refers to sound. It's basically a sound shock wave, okay? Uh, generated from the extreme heat um, produced by a lightning flash. Okay, so how exactly does this happen? Well, first of all, it says lightning can be as hot as 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, which is actually a temperature that's five times hotter than the surface of the sun. So those electric discharges that you see as lightning can be extremely hot, okay? Now, when lightning occurs, it heats the, the air surrounding it to that same incredible temperature, and it heats it very, very quickly in just a fraction of a second. Okay. And like all gases, when air molecules are heated, they expand. Okay. Y'all know that warm things are less dense, um, cool things are more dense, and that's because when things are heated, the molecules like to expand. Okay. If you take a gas, and you heat it, it's going to expand. Well, if you take a gas such as the atmosphere, the air that is out in the uh, surrounding the thunderstorm, okay, and you have an electrical discharge, a lightning bolt basically, um, that's 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit, that is a lot of heat and it is going to very, very quickly heat the air molecules that are close to it, okay? The faster they're heated, the faster their rate of expansion. So as soon as they're heated, you've given them more energy, they're going to move faster, and they're going to expand. Okay. When air is heated to 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit in just a fraction of a second, we get something called an explosive expansion. Okay. And this is where air expands so rapidly that it compresses the air in front of it Basically, it slams into the air that's a little bit further away from the lightning bolt, and it basically um, creates a shock wave of air, okay? Um, a sound of any sort is transmitted, transmitted through air as um, molecules bumping into each other, and that's how the wave is transmitted. You get uh, little molecules transmitting the waves, bumping into each other, okay? But when the air expands rapidly enough, that bumping, you know, if, if you're talking about a lot of air molecules bumping into each other with a lot of force, you're, you're talking about a, basically a shock wave of air, okay? All right, the reason why you hear firecrackers when they um, detonate out in the sky on the 4th of July and whatnot is because of the same result, okay? the heat from the explosion heats the air molecules around um, those chemicals and causes the same sort of phenomenon. So you hear the, the fireworks as they explode for the same reason that you hear lightning when it strikes, okay? All right, so we have a little um, sort of a visual down here. Number one, when lightning strikes, a shock wave is generated at each point along the path of the lightning bolt. Now, we can't really show you each path, you know, each little point along the lightning bolt because we'd have so many overlapping little circles it would just kind of confuse everything. But they picked four little spots, okay? So the heat from this little area is causing the air right next to the uh, lightning bolt to expand very rapidly, okay, and form a shock wave that goes out in all directions and looks kind of like this little bubble. Now, you don't actually see the bubbles, okay, because air is invisible and these shock waves are going to be invisible, um, but they are there, okay? So, 
as they expand and eventually reach your ear, that's when you start to hear the thunder. And of course, these um, sound shockwaves, basically, what you're going to hear is thunder. They travel at the speed of sound, which is about 340 or so meters per second. Okay. Now, I'm going to refer back to this illustration, but I'm going to go on to um, 2, 3, and 4 right here. Okay. Number two, with nearby lightning strikes, the thunder will sound like a loud bang, crack, or snap, and its duration will be very short. Okay. As the shock wave propagates away from the strike center, it stretches, diminishes, and becomes elongated. Then other shock waves from more distant locations arrive to the listener. Okay, so if you are very, very close to a lightning strike, you know that basically you see the lightning and hear the thunder um, at almost the same instant of time, and that the thunder is very loud, uh, a very staccato, meaning sharp sound, um, and, and uh, can be very shocking if you're not expecting it. Okay, But further away, um, the shock waves kind of get stretched, diminished, uh, and you get kind of a a more rolling sound, um, not as sharp a sound, it's not as loud, and it lasts for a longer period of time. Okay, So at large distances from the center, the shock wave, which is the thunder, can be many, many miles across. So to the listener, the combination of shock waves gives thunder that continuous rumble. Okay. All right, here is something really kind of helpful. Remember the flash to bang method to estimate lightning from your location. And here's what the flash to bang method is. If you see lightning, count the number of seconds until you hear thunder. So you see the lightning, and then you're going to count one, two, three, four, five, boom. And that's when you hear the thunder. Okay. Um, what you need to do is you take the number of seconds and divide by five to get the distance the light is away from you in miles, okay? So for example, if you see lightning and it takes 10, th 10 seconds before you hear the thunder, then the lightning's about two miles away from you because 10 divided by five equals two, okay? If you um, see lightning and then you hear thunder almost together, then you're very, very close, and of course it's gonna be louder. Um, but this is a very easy way of estimating your distance away from wherever the, the location of the lightning flash is. Okay? All right, so you need to understand thunder is produced by lightning. Okay? Lightning is that tremendous electrical discharge okay, um, caused by those cumulonimbus clouds. And it heats the air so, so, so rapidly that it causes this explosion, explosive expansion of air. And that shock wave is transmitted out as thunder. It, that's what we hear it as. Okay. Now, the reason you're always going to see the lightning before you hear the thunder is because light travels um, much, much, much faster than thunder does or light travels faster than sound. Light, if you remember from Unit 6, travels 300 million meters per second. Okay, so light, and that's going to be the light from the lightning. So you're going to see the lightning much faster than you will hear thunder because sound in air travels at a, eh, about 340 meters per second. So you can see that lightning just, I mean, you're going to see the lightning basically when it happens because light travels so fast. But sound is going to take much longer to get to us. Okay. Okay. And if you take 340 and multiply it by 5, that's about how many meters there are in a mile, and that's why you're dividing by five. So if you count to five, um, 
then the lightning strikes about a mile away from you. Okay?